Hello, my name is Jimmy Allison, and I'm an Ableton Live certified trainer. I teach classes online and locally. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Guitar Rig to take dummy clips in order to change presets. Now, I already have Guitar Rig loaded on the track, so the first thing we need to do is to load a MIDI track. I'm going to insert MIDI track. I'm going to go ahead and rename it. Um, we'll just call it Program Change uh, Guitar Rig. And now we need to go into our input output options, which is located right here in between the mixer and the clip view. The IO can be shown or hidden over here on the right with these little yellow buttons, the one that says IO. You can click it to hide it and click it to show it. And if it's grayed out, you might have too many things open, so you could hide your, your sends or your mixer to maybe show it up, depending on the size of your screen. So now back on the track I.O., I'm going to route the MIDI 2 to the ARP Odyssey track, which happens to be an audio track, but it will take the MIDI because Guitar Rig accepts MIDI, and it autom automatically selects Guitar Rig. And I'm also going to take the MIDI from, and I'm going to say no input, just to be safe, because I don't want any MIDI messages getting in here that I didn't create myself. So now over on the audio track, I'm going to go ahead and open up Guitar Rig. So the first thing we should do is go into Options in Guitar Rig and make sure the MIDI channel is set to receive on Omni. And then back on the presets, what you want to do is make a preset bank. I have one called My Presets that I use, but I'll make a new one. You just right click and say Create a New Tag, and then you can name it whatever you want, and then you'll have a blank bank. And then what, what's cool is you can either make new presets to throw it in there, or let's just grab a few of mine and drop them in. And we'll drop you in, we'll drop you in, and we'll drop this one in, and we'll drop empty. And now I have four in here, and it automatically gives them a number one, two, three, four. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put empty up onto one, and then sub base two, and you can. Organize them however you want, but once they're organized, you should probably leave it that way. So now back in Ableton, all I need to do is double click to create a MIDI clip in my MIDI track, and then set the program under here under the notes section, which can be shown and hidden with this notes button. I'm going to send out program one. And then I'm going to go just go ahead and duplicate the clip and then change this one to program two. Duplicate it again. Make that program three and one more time for program four. And now the cool thing is anytime I launch one of these clips, it will change the bank for me. And then, of course, this one. Welcome to the world. And that's pretty much that. So the next thing we want to do is go ahead and let's change the colors on all these so they're a little bit different. And the main thing is that they're different colors and the lighter colors work better because I also want to name the clips. We're just going to name it 0, 1, Empty. And just name the clips for, for each bank, basically. That way, now I can close Guitar Rig, and I don't even need to really see it. And I'm pretty much set up. But I want to go over a few more things before I close this video down. First off, when you set up all your clips, you're probably going to basically create your clip palette. And I usually tend to put it at the bottom of my live set. So that way I can just kind of go and pick what I need and I can copy and paste it where I need it. The other thing that's really handy to do is you can MIDI map those clip slots to, you know, different buttons on a MIDI controller or on your keyboard. So that way you can quickly access those on the fly, like when you're improv improv improvisizing. The other thing that's really good to do is I'm going to go ahead and set my quantization for these clips a little bit different. Right now, 
the quantization is set to global, which means it'll be based on whatever my global quantization is set to, which is currently set to one bar. So what I can do is select all my clips and set my global quantization to none. So that way, whenever I trigger the clip, it automatically flips presets, which is relatively handy if you're going to MIDI map that like a, to a foot controller or something. But now if I want to use this in my set, which it's really handy, say, in a prearranged set where I have maybe backing tracks, maybe not backing tracks, but I know what I want. You know, for this eight bars, I want this sound. For the next eight bars, I want this sound. So you can basically copy your clips down and paste them into clip slots. And let's actually get the, this one. And then let's go back to sub bass. And this could be in the context of a song. I'll just make a few more MIDI clips. And I might have different sections playing with each one of these sections. You know, it could be like a verse, chorus, bridge, or however it's working. So now on the scene launch, oh, one more thing. Let me go ahead and quantize these. So I'm going to set quantization to global. So that way the clips change with all of the other clips in my set. So now I can push the scene launch. So quickly, you know, change through my banks and I don't have to actually do anything. Another really cool way to use these clips is with follow action. Now, we can't automate the program change. So that's where follow actions do come into play. This enables to automate that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set these top two. And just as an example, we go into the follow action. And I'm going to say play next. And then I'm gonna, it's going to happen in two bars. And then this bottom one is the chance that it happens. A one to zero ratio means it will always happen. And for those of you that might not be familiar with follow actions, basically the follow action, the clip will play and then do whatever you tell it to do. And then it'll play the next clip, basically. It'll say like, okay, play next clip, first clip, and other clip. They're a lot of fun to play with. So with this setup, I click the first clip and in two bars, it launches the next clip. So this, this really enables you to not have to actually even do push anything. You just trigger the one clip, play, and then play your song. And then all of your presets will change throughout your tune. It's especially handy for if you're playing multiple instruments, and you want multiple things to happen with bank changes. Um, program change works with all kinds of things, other VSTs, hardware synths, hardware effects units. Uh, it's pretty much all set up in a very similar fashion. But thank you guys for watching. Again, I am the Austin Ableton Tutor. I teach online and I teach locally in Austin, Texas. I'm an Ableton Live certified trainer. If you're interested in any private one-on-one -on -one classes, that's what I specialize in. Um, go ahead and check out my website or send me a email.